Now I have a very sad situation you will eventually be made aware of. To lead into it, after our conversations via emails, the devils in high places became aware they are finished. But certain individuals are on automatic pilot and will continue to do what they are paid or inclined to do. Once the new man emerged from the conclave, we knew beforehand that it would be the same who was narrowly defeated in 2005, which caused the people behind him to deal with prophecy. Revelation 17.11, as they in 2005 wanted the seventh king pope to be Francis, suddenly their plans were thwarted. thwarted. The seventh pope has to have retired, and as such you did that, albeit you were unaware. The angels had burdened you with a broken wrist and arthritic pains and depression over your failure to rid the church of filth. Covertly, Satan's man was waiting, then prevented. You became Pope and accomplished prophecy, which was the man still alive of the seven. Had Francis become Pope in 2005, he would have retired and he would then be reinstated in some manipulation and became the man the world would have been told was Peter reincarnated Petros Romanus. The tables were turned and so the man chosen by Satan had to wait until you resigned. This man is known for his atrocities. These are child rape. Kidnapping as seen here in Rome with Father Giuseppe and Sister Maria della Rosa for supporting a Pope that they worked for. Francis dismissed Father Giuseppe as a traitor committing treason for his part in the Apostolic Letter and Facebook. His friend in Canada, that was Monsignor Giovanni Rossini, was also removed from the church. Sister Maria Della Rosa, an expert biographer, highly educated and a witness to communications, extremely dangerous, had to be silenced. We received communications from your computer. <coughs> men identified as investigators for Francis. They boasted Father Giuseppe had been sent away from Rome and we would not be told where he is. He had a last request as priest before excommunication to send one last message to us telling of the events of the night he and Sister Maria were taken. Seven days later, someone supposing to be Giuseppe made contact through the Facebook message again. They had reactivated the page, Giuseppe's page. He said he was under house arrest and two police were with him in a house Francis had chosen and he was with a friend of his who had a computer and cell phone. Whoever this was told us that the night of the arrest, the Francis men entered your office to arrest Giuseppe. You made effort to stop them. They knocked you down to the floor. Giuseppe tried to help you. They put handcuffs on him and the last he saw of you, you were on the floor bleeding from the ear and crying. He told us that he was chloroformed in the car and woke up in a basement, told one of them to fuck off and then he was kicked in the jaw and it was still very painful one week later. The communication was supposed to be coming from a house chosen by Francis, sharing it with the friend who was under house arrest as well, apparently. In the second communication, the house was now surrounded by 14 security people, a detective from Rome visited every day. But missed by the detective, a computer hooked to the internet. Messages came for two days, then the plan to escape, which they did, and then the report by the friend of the murder of Giuseppe, gunned down, yelling my name, shot eight times. The car having run into a ditch, Giuseppe got out, and running was gunned down by the detective John Eleonora, who must have been a good shot. The scene then cleared of the body and cleaned up. Then the driver of the car and the friend were able to get the car out of the ditch and drive another 20 kilometres to a priest's house. The priest was not there, though, to corroborate any of this. However, a doctor had been sent for. From then on, the emails began describing the scene, etc. Our people in Canada track the origin of the emails to the same town of Vola, which is where the one posing as Giuseppe said he was. In other words, the emails reporting his murder were coming from the same location as the one posing as Giuseppe was sending them, not 30 kilometres away in another town. 
In other words, no one went anywhere and the script was playing out from the same computer. So via satellite, we were able to show the latitude and longitude of the signal service provider. Once known, I was able to use another program called Google Earth. With it, we can zoom into the street and move along and circle the block, see what street it is on and even cars parked in the street. The pictures are some of the captures I have saved to my computer. This is a Vola Sicily. I had zoomed into the area and compared the terrain to the information supplied by the friend of Father Giuseppe. Zooming in, we have the town and I have the location marked Giuseppe Jail, the location across the street from the police station. The next slide is the actual building the emails were coming from or the server through which the signals were being forwarded from. You can see the latitude and longitude top right. The building takes up the entire block with heavy bars on the windows, with an air conditioner in each of the rooms, which would not be the actual cells for prisoners, is more likely the police officers. Prison cells are not air conditioned, but all windows of the various police departments would have bars on the windows to prevent escapes. The next slide was reported to us as being the detective who was from Rome. The information sent to us said his name was Detective John Eleonora. Our people traced this photo out and the gent is not a detective. This photo came up twice, once with the name Angelo using it and another using it with the name Croy, as in Greek cross. We were being set up to distract us from what was really going on. Francis the murderer and kidnapper cannot help himself. He again has proven what he really is with the kidnapping of both Giuseppe and Sister Maria Della Rosa. As said, I watched and heard eyewitnesses to the life of Francis in Argentina. There are several mothers of priests who worked for him and ran into his wrath. They were sent away and murdered, never to return. And their mothers have made videos of what happened and the last they heard of their sons. The bottom line is Francis is a murderer and deals with objectionable priests in the usual Argentinian way, kidnapping leading to death. Going back to the night of Giuseppe's alleged murder, within my email and Facebook, I questioned the events once again and this time silence. The next Facebook message, the doctor had not arrived, a knock on the door, and a box is delivered. In it, Giuseppe's head, we were told. And when Ash responded with bullshit, that is when the jig was up, and whoever was sending the messages suddenly had to go. The following morning, someone else tried to converse with Karen, from our household and when she challenged him about the supposed head in the box arriving they said that was someone else not him. This is supposed to be the friend who reported the events of the night. Now, the following is the funeral card that was sent to my email. I believe that Father Giuseppe is his assumed name upon becoming a priest because you in your first emails to me referred to him as your good friend Don Giovanni Cervello. All of the following was supposed to have occurred within 18 minutes. According to the timing described by the friend left alive as a witness to murder by men working for Francis. Not in order of events, however, you will see the idiocy of the picture I am painting. Get a photo of Giuseppe, make up a memorial card, tra travel 12 kilometres, run into an ambush, get shot, swerve into a dish, see the detective shoot to... Giuseppe eight times, we're close enough to see precisely where the shots hit him, then see men come out of the house with a hose to wash down the road of blood, take the body away, forget about the two in the ditch, watch them drive off, then the driver and friend while shot in the leg, push the car out of the ditch, drive another 20 kilometres to a priest who is not available, send for a doctor, write the announcement of his murder, post it to Facebook, write the funeral card, send it to me, request that we immediately have a memorial service for Giuseppe on the YouTube, 
and within the hour Giuseppe's head is supposed to have arrived in a box. The town Casabili, where the shooting was to have occurred, we used the satellite to zoom in. The town is flat, no ditches. Any murder in the street would immediately have people looking out their windows. I continued the emails and then challenged the friend again as being a liar and one of a team working for Francis, his investigators. I questioned the distance to the car travelled in the time frame. I then said the towns he mentioned are 222 kilometres apart, as in the previous diagram. The friend was unaware there are two towns in Sicily with the same name, which is a name that ancient mariners used to mark on charts as safe havens. The friend then tried to say he made a mistake about the time of death at 3.45am. He was still bleeding from the gunshot. The email time is on the message, no mistake. Shortly after these events, emails are kept arriving, attempting to convince us it was true. He was the friend, known to Seppi for 10 years, knew all the priests and where they li lived. It was true. Now all of the above about the alleged murder of Giuseppe is, I believe, a hoax and is what the investigators working for Francis were bragging about when they told Mrs. Marshall to just wait to see what Francis has planned up his sleeves. So, we were able to scrape together the money to get to Rome, selling what we could, and one of our disciples, on his own accord, sent what he could. We do not ask for financial help from our disciples. I did seek help from an Australian billionaire at first wanted to help, then changed his mind. Obviously warned off. Clive Palmer, mining magnate. Clearly, Francis is a psychopath. He employed men who told us again in emails which we recorded, printed out and saved to hard drives. They said they were the Antichrist as Francis did not give a shit. Who is working for whom? What they did say was that Francis was concerned that you, Benedict, being a well-regarded theologian, were crazy enough to believe that Christ was back. No humility about him. He does not have a pure heart, and since I said as Jesus that the pure in heart will see God, the proof is right there. He cannot see what you saw, which is God. Now the powers behind the church are all satanic, Freemasonry, and it dominated by Jews. All worship Lucifer. Beneath the Vatican are 24 rooms. In them are various gods and deities. The last is a red painting on the wall, has Lucifer riding a white horse. It must be remembered that John Paul I was murdered, then replaced by John Paul II. Long before, though, was the conclave of 1958 had elected Cardinal Siri. Then, before being crowned, the news did not even get out of the conclave that he was elected. Everything within the conclave, he, he, he was overturned in the conclave. And the news went out that um, Ron Kelly was elected. Now, Cardinal Siri was murdered in 1989. He had secretly established the true church, becoming... Pope Gregory the 17th, the church had to go underground, but always under threat he was finally poisoned. He had with him for 31 years jailers keeping watch over him. He was replaced by the Freemason Angelo Roncalli, all of which we have covered. So we have the demons of hell surrounding Benedict XVI. Father Giuseppe missing, the emails say he is dead, which is in tune with the way Francis operated in Argentina. Eyewitness accounts of the mothers of priests who have disappeared never to be heard from again by friends and families. We have a man that was charged with child rape and abduction. Francis was the agent purchasing $200 million worth of Exocet missiles from the French used against Britain in the Falklands War. A man who has ignored the most educated and honest man ever to have been Pope, who said he has spoken to Christ in Australia and is the image of the man in the Shroud of Turin. Francis is surrounded by Freemasons and homosexuals, all dominated by Jews. Before his crowning, one of the first contacts was a phone call from the leading rabbi in New York.
your secretary, George Ganswain, has been sworn to secrecy, never to mention my name or listen to what I say. But what did I, Jesus, say concerning this type of oath? Or is he just waiting my arrival? Yes. Matthew 3.37 But let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. The Spanish newspapers reported in May you were very frail and to expect a funeral soon. The idea was to kill you and say you had died naturally. Poison is the preferred option. And old photographs of you being circulated up and about, frail but in good health. Then you had opted to become a monk. Later, two German doctors said they had examined you. Your mind was alert and although frail, were in excellent health. The latest is the dedication of the statue of St. Michael. The project was yours as Pope. Now Francis has to dedicate what you began. Then Rome report tells the world you are wishing him a good trip to Rio. This is a major move by the angels influencing you to create the project as Michael is indeed my angel and is reckoned in and is recorded in my chromosomes 3, 4 and 13. Being Michael, the Archangel in Greek, 3413. Unusual chromosomes. Now we have travelled Europe, spoken to countless people, dropped off the apostolic letter to churches since we arrived on the 28th of April. Not one person, priest or church in any country worldwide, was remotely concerned with what happened to you, Giuseppe or Sister Maria. Only my disciples are concerned. We went to the highest level of the Rome police, not interested, nor would they even telephone Sicily and inquire about a murder of a priest or anyone that was of Giuseppe's age. We went to the German embassy as well, and I believe it was shortly after that that Angela Merkel visited Francis. However, we heard nothing. We went to the Swiss Guards, waited in the foyer of the Vatican for George Ganswain on May the 2nd, and then sent George a fax requesting to see you one week later. And of course we've heard nothing. Incidentally, we had been warned by Francis that if we came to Rome, we would be arrested. We were sitting in the office after talking to the gendarmes, John Darms at the entrance. We have copies of all emails from Rome and Sicily, and there has been to date 20,051 views of the apostolic letter written in 17 languages with the original sent and uploaded by Father Giuseppe. Now the following is an account of Reverend W.D. Mann of Boonville, Missouri, takes us back to the time within days of the cross. A witness, a man who travelled to Rome and studied the records within the Vatican and Constantinople, and in 1889 published his book called The Archco Volume. From it is the following account of Pilate. It's called Pilate's Report to Tiberius Caesar, Emperor of Rome. Now, I have already recorded this on another video, so I will stop here. number five in the series, get this uploaded.